I've owned my round collar milling machine for about 25 years or so. I'm currently machining some castings for a small middle type engine single cylinder and this has uh, required more use of the mill than I've made in a, in a long time. Some of the quirks of the round column design were bugging me a bit so I decided to try a couple of quick fixes. Please bear in mind that I make uh, mostly model steam engines as one-offs and not for example high precision parts for Formula One cars, aeroplanes or spaceships. The main problems I find with the round column type mill is the loss of position if the head is moved vertically part way through a, a milling operation mostly because I didn't assess the length of tooling correctly and then the second Secondly, the need to keep using a chuck key when in drilling mode if uh, various different sizes of drill are required for a given setting. But even after 25 plus years, the total run out on the quill on this thing is barely a thousandth of an inch. I've actually got a uh, half inch end mill in the in the collet chuck which is possibly the most accurate bit of ground steel I've got uh, and as far as I'm concerned that is absolutely excellent. One of the modifications I did make was to fit a three-phase motor and a variable speed inverter drive. See one of my earlier videos, YouTube videos on that modification and I highly commend it. It is extremely worthwhile thing to do. And the variable speed drive is a worthwhile thing to do if only for the fact that to change the speed on these machines using the belts is tedious to say the least. Uh, almost inevitably end up climbing on some short steps to get up there to uh, fiddle about with the belts takes ages and the reality was until I fitted the variable speed drive I never ever changed the speed so everything was milled at the wrong speed just couldn't be bothered well you get what you pay for as the saying goes and although the so just the x-axis table has stops so that you can limit the travel depending on what you're doing these machines as a standard did not come with any form of stop arrangement on the lateral to the y-axis. Um, but that was fairly readily overcome by making this little arrangement here. The existing stop in the X direction is fixed by two M8 bolts. And I removed one of those and inserted a long M8 bolt and locking nut. I don't know why, but there are already two M5 tapped holes in the yellow feed screw casting. And I used those M5 holes to attach the stop plate that I made. There are two simple collars with M5 locking screws which act as stops on the long M8 bolt. You'll notice that I don't keep the hand wheel on the cross feed permanently attached, it's just a loose fitting, I just put it on when I need it. And the reason for that is there isn't a great deal of uh, room in my workshop. And every time I walked by the uh, milling machine, I was forever pranging myself on the uh, on the handle. The long M8 cap head bolt is, is I've got a bunch of these lying about in one of my toolboxes, which is why I used it. As I said previously, the x-axis stop is fixed by two M8 bolts into the table of the mill. 
if you don't have any long M8 bolts, there's a little job for your lathe to take a length of shootable length of shootable diameter steel, thread one end, end M8 to screw into the table as I showed, and uh, fit a lock, locking nut and do it that way. And that brings me to drilling, brings me to another drawback of these round column machines, which is unlike the more expensive jobs, the table is uh, does not fit a knee. This is fixed, you can't move it. And if you need to adjust the height, you have to wind the entire head up and down using the handle and up and down on the rack. Uh, with the result that every time you altered the head everything would rotate like mad and go flying off somewhere which was very annoying. In large part I overcame that by as best I could using a level aligning the rack vertically with the column and fixing it with two countersunk screws at each end, two there and Move it carefully out. Uh, and there's actually two up here. I can't bring it down because I've got a tool in the way at the moment. And there are two more screws at the top. Uh, I did need to use the four because with only one at each end, there was still enough flex in this rack. Although it's made of uh, solid steel, so there was too much flex in it, and it was. The head was still wandering about a bit, which kind of drove me mad. Really. I've put a piece of um, round bar, nothing special, in the chuck. And I don't know if it will come out really. The run out. At the end of the four inch bar, which is not something one would normally do, it's still only within the range of two south, plus or minus one. And bearing in mind that's not a ground bar, I don't know what it is, uh, I don't think that's too bad. Now, in performing this little test, the clamping bolts are not actually locked, they're loose. They're not moving with my fingers, but trust me they are. So the head is free to be raised and lowered. And I'll just stop the machine. So with the head on, with the, uh, the quill kind of unlocked from the column, if I just try and move it, it can only be moved in a total range of about 3 thou. And you might think, how did you do that? That's a bit of a miracle. And the short answer to that question is, I simply stuck a couple of bits of uh, brass. One is a thin shim, one is a slightly thicker shim, and the total thickness uh, on this machine is about 60 thou to take the play out between the the slot, in, the, the slot in the head and the side of this rack. And suddenly we've got a fairly, within limits, a fairly rigid machine. And you'll notice I haven't even bothered to fix anything here, I've just, I have just, just, just pushed it up. Um, and if it comes a bit loose, I just push it back. Uh, one fine day, I guess I might put a screw in somewhere and attach it to the uh, to the head. But there seems little point in doing that to me. So at the moment, the machine is at its maximum height. And as I say, I've got a bit of four inch miscellaneous steel in the truck. So if I lower the machine, 
slowly. The question is how good Perhaps it flies about a bit. Does it keep? There's a there's a knob in this still, so I'll stop at that point. So I've come down about three inches, I think. And it's now showing that it's out of uh, vertical by about 18 down. Now I know the chuck the uh, collet's all right. I don't think these bars bent as such. So what this is really telling me is when I Probably rough and ready align this rack by eye. Uh, my eyes are 18 thou out. And if I'd have taken more care with this, I rather suspect that that run out would not be so great. So I like this because it's a really cheap freebie. I'll just lock the head to see if this makes any difference to the run. So using the clamping bolts, I've now locked the head to the round column and curiously in doing that it has reduced the deviation to 10 thou. So my eyes weren't really 18 thou out, they were 10 thou out more or less. But anyway, for all the sorts of things that I do Bluntly, that's good enough. And if you took more care about how you were fixing this up with your rack, no doubt you could do better. But uh, that's not my style, really. The other kind of curious thing at this lowered position is that the run out on the bit of rod is now negligible. So, jolly good show because that is more like the point at which uh, a milling cutter would sit if I were to do anything. So very happy really. Now you might be asking yourself why is he messing about with um, this quill and bits of brass to lock it in the vertical mode. In an ideal world, when you were doing uh, some sort of uh, drilling, milling or what operation, you would actually figure out the maximum length of, of tool or drill or mill, whatever the hell it was, and wind the head in such a position that if you change tooling, which you'll have to, um, there was still plenty of room to do that. The difficulty, however, is that the drill chuck, the Morse tape of drill chuck that came with the mill, is quite a long bit of kit. Specifically, the tang on this as supplied drill chuck is four inches or so long which means to extract that if you've installed it or you want to install it uh, in the quill you've got to give yourself four inches um, in order to to pull it out and that's not always all that achievable really because but you will also have a drill in the end which you might be able to wiggle out but bear in mind you've got some parts that's probably in your vice that you're working on and you don't really want to muck that about too much if you use that drill chuck, and sometimes you'll have to, it's a bit of a rave and you're almost certain to lose position. Now the, the slight mod to the rack obviates at least some of that within 5 or 10 thou, 10 thou. And you know, depending on what you're doing, that may not be critical. But there is an alternative. For milling purposes, I've got a huge variety of milling cutters, but I have a lot, uh, probably a dozen, with a half inch uh, diameter shank. So as far as possible, I don't know what I'm doing, I try and not to have to keep changing the collets, 
and just use the half inch cutter. Obviously that doesn't work if you've got something really small to do, but by and large this this these half inch cutters cover a great deal of what I do. So the collet that's in there is a half inch collet. Anyone who's watched any of my previous videos will have noticed that I'm far too lazy, if I have can avoid it, to use chuck keys. And I recovered an old hand tightening chuck from a cheapo drill and fitted that into the chuck of my uh, drill press. And I suddenly had a rush of blood to the brain, because I've got quite a few of these uh, chucks that I've recovered from defunct drills. This is actually quite a good quality Jacobs chuck as it happens. And suddenly I had the thought that if I actually modified that to fit in the half inch collet chuck in the in the mill, the overall length would be significantly less than the as supplied uh, chuck with the mill. So on the lathe on the lathe, a uh, quick turning job, a bit of half inch steel, and carefully screw cut using the lathe, 3 8 by 24 thread. Interesting little job, didn't take very long, so that this arbor will fit in the end of this chuck. And you can now see, I hope, that this modified chuck arrangement, which is hand tightening, is considerably shorter than the tang on the original the original chuck and so that this is easily now installed in the collet on the mill and actually doesn't present the kind of issues in terms of height in changing tools from drills to mills or whatever but this devil does. Obviously there's a drawback and the drawback is you are limited to the capacity of this chuck which is less than that and this is about three eighths I remember. Um, but nonetheless, um, only if you used a bigger drill, probably wouldn't handle a three eighths drill, it'd probably slip. Um, but nevertheless for the vast majority of operations this is a better bet than that and far quicker to use. I mean, you've got to bear in mind, this is a second hand worn out chuck recovered from an old drill. The drill itself is a bit mullered on the end from slipping various times. So, um, I'm not making aircraft parts. I'll take it. Perhaps the last thing I'll say about reclaiming these um, used drill chucks from battery powered drills that no longer function is that sometimes, no matter how careful you are to machine the arbor and get the thread square, these things when you put them in the mill or whatever um, still do not run acceptably true when you hold a, a drill or something and the reason I guess obviously is that the uh, through years of abuse the jaws themselves have become uh, somewhat mullered up. The way around that I have found is to set a piece of appropriately sized bar as accurately as you can in your fore jaw, then screw the chuck using its normal uh, locking to the end of the uh, of the bar that's now running true into put the two together and then and only then after you've done that Put a centre mark in the end of what, if it's not working out well, will be an eccentrically spinning 
arbor, center that, and let's. Using a center in the tail stock, you can then turn the arbor true, and with a fair wind, you'll find that your drill, notwithstanding the state of the jaws of the chuck, your drills will run fairly true or run accurately. So having made the modifications to the height adjusting rack on the round column mill and using the uh, hand tightening chucks in the half inch collet on the mill I'll get back to making the little Stuart Victoria single cylinder mill engine which kind of prompted the whole exercise.